Hi you guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Caitlin for those of you that are new and if you're not then welcome back. Today I'm going to be sharing with you five yoga poses that you can be doing on the daily just to integrate a little bit of yoga into your lifestyle. Your forward bend, back bend, twist to the right, twist to the left lateral stretch to the right, lateral stretch to the left. So to keep things healthy, to keep things fluid and say lubricated, we want the spine to move in six directions every day. Legs up the wall, the first posture is just kind of an extra benefit because it feels awesome and it just feels so stinking good literally breathing space into your spine it's incredible if you want to see the five yoga poses that i think you could be doing on the daily then just keep watching Getting into legs up the wall, you're going to scoot as close as you can towards the wall, roll onto your side body, outer shoulder, and then fully roll onto the back, extend your legs up the wall. It's so much easier to do it that way rather than lying down and then trying to scoot your butt. It's so much harder. So just do the little tuck and roll fetal pose and then extend your legs up the wall. I promise you, it's so much easier. Students sometimes will struggle so heavily without sliding on their sticky mat and then it becomes a strenuous experience. So reduce the stress that induce the stress. So I love legs up the wall and quite frankly, I would say if you could only do one yoga pose a day, let it be legs up the wall. You will see why once you do the posture, it's so delicious. It neutralizes and decompresses your spine, which hello, that's amazing. Feels really nice on the leg line. However, if the hamstrings are a little bit tighter, you don't have to sit your bottom right up against the wall or right up against the baseboard because then the posture can start to feel a little bit strenuous, stress inducing, and we're trying to relieve and de-stress by integrating these yoga postures in our day-to-day -day lives. So we want legs up the wall to feel more, say, balancing for the energy levels, bringing you into a state that's more neutral. So I think it's nice too, if say like energy levels are super high, stop dropping legs up the wall. If energy levels are depleted, feeling a little bit low, stop dropping legs up the wall. So for me, I would say it's a pretty strong cure-all in terms of postures, and you can explore a number of variations. So you could work into your wide angle, which is more hips, groin, still decompresses the back, but a little more lower body heavy. Second option that I showed is that you can do your bound angle, and that can be self-assisted by pressing with the hands. So nice assist for the hips. Third variation that I demoed today is a spinal twist. So super yummy, you walk the feet over to the one way, open up the arms, and then look to the opposite way if that's a good choice and it's safe for your neck. Couple rounds of breath and then flip that over, do your twist on the other side. So I love legs up the wall, not only for the true nature where the spine is long and the legs are long, supported inversion, you are upside down, giving the blood in the body the opportunity to flow in the opposite direction. So super beneficial on a number of levels and you can explore all of these different variations. So legs up the wall or Vipari Riti Karani is our first of five yoga poses. So our next pose is child's pose. On the more mellow, restorative nature, energetically is probably why I love child's pose so much because it's so grounding, it's so calming. You're just in this like tight little, mm, tight's not even a good word. You're in this just very comfortable little nook and it's your own sense of safety. You would certain in a tabletop, so you're on your hands and your knees, bring your big toes together, not overlap to big toes together, wide knees, sink your sitting bones back to your heels. Your arms can stay outstretched or you can bend into your elbows and you can pillow your hands down. So not only do I love child's pose because energetically it feels wonderful on the body, physically it's a gentle forward fold. So you're bringing length into the spine, opening up the hips using the weight of the upper body and you're stretching out through the fronts of the ankles and the tops of the feet. We get into the heart being open, depending on what the arms are doing, we get some nice length and opening in the armpits, the triceps, the arms, you just want to be sure that you're not hiking the shoulders up, creating this contracted state. You want to be skillful in the body, keep the neck long without adding all of this, again, additional stress. If child's pose is too much, say on the knees, you're welcome to pad the knees with blankets or you're welcome to slide one of these little bolsters or a pillow, if you don't have a bolster, put a bolster underneath the front of the body and that's a perfect way to modify the pose. If you want to try something a little bit different, more rounding of the spine, a more supported forward fold, on the spine, then you try what's called embryo pose. The knees are together, top
tops of the feet are down, and then you sink forward, let the forehead rest. As long as this is a safe rotation for the shoulders, you would bring the backs of the hands to take rest on the floor, hands open, and let the head rest. And that's really nice for the low back body if you want to try something different outside of your child's pose. Into a little bit of a back bend. So I'm going to show you a variation of cobra pose. We're belly down. I like to find the finger pad. Finger pads create this little tent shape. Imagine that you have like a lacrosse ball or a tennis ball right underneath palms of the hands. Squeezing the inner elbows in. The progression to lift, shoulders, neck, and head. Okay, a couple of details before you go into the posture. You have the tops of the feet down. Kneecaps are lifted. Inner thighs are wrapping up. Lengthen your tailbone down. One more time. Lengthen your tailbone down. Relax your butt. It's not your glutes, it's the spine, it's the legs. Finger pads down on an inhale, you rise. Go shoulders, neck, and head. And with the exhale, we lower down. Shoulders, neck, then hovering the head. Really focusing on the undulation of the spine. Inhale, we rise. Shoulders, neck, then up through the head. Heart is open, spine is strong. Exhale, we lower down. Shoulders, neck, then up to the head. Exhale, lower, check in with the glutes, keep them soft. Inhale, you rise. Shoulders, neck, and head. Exhale, lower. So once more, inhale, we rise. Shoulders, neck, and head, lower down. With our cobra pose, you want to counter the forward fold of child's pose with some spine strengthening, toning of the spine. So legs up the wall, we were neutral on the spine. Child's pose, we were in a nice little forward fold. Then with cobra pose, where we just were, we were toning and strengthening the spine. So you want the spine to move, healthy spine, healthy life. I feel like I've seen that on a shirt to like a massage place or something. Healthy spine, healthy life. But yeah, your spine should be moving and grooving. You just want to keep the spine healthy. Let's go into our lateral stretch. I love the lateral stretching because it takes the low back out of the picture altogether. You're working through connective tissue that runs along your side bodies. So low back is just out of the picture. So for those that have some sensitivity, say in the lumbar and the sacrum, this is a great series for you to integrate into day-to-day -day life. First, we come up to a comfortable seat. We take what's called Sukhasana. I'm crossing my ankles and I'm letting my knees drop down. If it's super compromising to just sit on the floor, sit on height, sit on a bolster, sit on some blocks, sit on a pillow, sit on some books, sit on something so that you can keep length in the low back body and it's not this big splay forward or big rounded spine. You just want to stay long and lifted. So think long spine and lift in the heart. A lateral stretch, you'll take your right hand across the midline, bring it over towards either your left thigh or your left knee. For me personally, I like to hook at my left kneecap. Oh, circle the left arm up and over. This feels so good. Notice that my left knee is pushing down and my right elbow is strong and straight, circling left arm up and over. Find what works to the gaze. You can either keep the gaze neutral, look forward. You can look down towards the opposite knee or you can look up towards your lifted hand. You want to use the breath to self-assist. With every inhale, you're lengthening, you're stretching through the top arm. With every exhale, you're revolving and rolling the rib cage and shoulder back. And with the inhale, upward through the hands. Flip your palms and exhale with these fingertips to the floor. So this might sound obvious to some of you, but it's not super obvious to everybody. You have to make sure that you're doing both sides. If you're doing the right side, then you're doing the left side. Left hand crosses the midline, just a little refresh. You have the elbow straight, you have the right knee reaching down. On the inhale, circle the right arm up and over. Same concept here. On the exhale, we're rolling the barrel of the chest, the rib cage open. Inhale, we reach, we stretch in opposition, and on the exhale, we open. Taking one more with breath, on the inhale, we lengthen, get really long, and with the exhale, roll the chest open. Releasing with the breath, on the inhale, arms up, gaze up, flip through the palms, and exhale, ground with fingertips to the floor. That's our lateral stretch, that's our fourth posture, working through the connective tissue that runs deep through our side bodies, so super helpful, just immediately, like there's this freeing of space in the body. So these are five postures that, that you could be doing on the daily to increase your range of motion, to increase your own body awareness, and integrating yoga and meditation into your life. The beauty of it, among a number of things, it gives you the opportunity to slow down enough and actually feel, right? To consciously choose what you're doing with your body instead of this rushing and going and jarring all of the time. Integrating a yoga practice, this grounding, balancing practice gives you the time to really be conscious, to really be present in what you're doing with yourself day to day, breath to breath, moment to moment. So for half-loaded the fish, 
You want to twist the right side first. So we're going to extend our left leg long first. Left leg long. Hug your right knee into your chest. Cross your right foot over. Place the sole of your right foot on the ground. All four corners root down into the floor. This is option one and you are welcome to keep your left leg long if you would like to deepen the posture. And it's a good choice for you, not just because I'm offering it, but because it's a good choice for you. Bend deeply into the left knee, hug your right heel into your left butt cheek. It's twisted, so just follow along with the verbal cues, be patient, have fun with it. We reach the right fingertips to the floor behind our right hip. We inhale, slice our left arm up, and with the exhale, hook your left elbow, your left tricep on top of your right thigh. Same concept is with our lateral stretching. Every inhale, we're lifting and lengthening from the heart and from the head. Every exhale, we're twisting and rolling the right shoulder and the rib cage back. Let's do that two more times. On the breath in, I grow longer. And with my exhale breath, I'm rolling and twisting back. One more together. Keep the neck long, shoulders relaxed. Inhale, we lengthen. And exhale, we twist. Let it soak in, hold for your inhale. Exhale, unwind and face the front of the row. As I offered with our lateral stretching, if you do one side, you have to do the other. So for this round, let's have our right leg long, cross your left foot over, bend deeply into your right knee, swing your right heel to the outside of your left butt cheek. Once you have the leg set up, you're good to go. All four corners of your left foot is down. Plant through the left hand. Inhale, we look up, reach up, really lengthen your right side body. Exhale, you're hooking the right tricep, right elbow. With every in-breath, get longer. And with the exhale, twist the left shoulder back. Taking two more with your breath. Inhale, you rise. Exhale to twist. One more together, deep breath in. And all the breath out. Hold the twist for the inhale, really let it soak in. And exhale, you unwind. Face in front of the space and unwind your leg. Half Lord of the Fishes is one of my favorite seated upright twists. I find that I just get a lot more rotation and revolve when I'm upright as opposed to when I'm on the back. If Half Lord of the Fish is too much, the supine twist that I offered where you're using the wall to assist is perfectly fine to say modify or um, do something different if you want a different variation. So, so if you guys enjoyed this video, then please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I upload videos every Thursday, so I hope to see you guys in my next video. Thank you so very much for being here. Have a wonderful day. Be kind to yourself and be kind to others. Um, Bye. Background information to offer you in every pose. I would say legs up the wall. You can really hang out there for a good chunk of time, five to 10 minutes, to be totally honest. If you start to run into any, say like numbing or tingling in the feet or the legs, totally normal. Just means that the feet need to, or rather the blood needs to recirculate. So hug the knees into the chest, take a couple rounds of breath, and then come back into the posture as you're ready. With child's pose, same thing. You can really chill out, hang out there. I often, in a restorative yoga class, if I get put into child's pose, I'm out like a light. Literally, I am out like a light. Like I'm dead asleep for the rest of the class. I often will wake up and my feet will have fallen asleep. So child's pose, go to town a couple of minutes. If the yoga practice is new to you, say eight breaths. Do like eight rounds of really slow, enjoyable breath. And then you can move on, go belly down into cobra pose. Do that, rise and fall, shoulders, neck and head, eight to 10 times. Then you're upright in your seat, you're in your lateral stretch, about a minute on each side. Eight to 10 rounds of breath on your right side, eight to 10 rounds of breath for your left side. And then finally with our twisting series of half Lord of the fishes, same concept, eight to 10 rounds of breath will do you just fine. Super beneficial when rinsing out the spine, consciously creating space and massaging the internal organs. When you twist, it's also super beneficial for your digestion and your elimination. What I would encourage before you get into the practice is that you cultivate an open mind and an open heart and just willingness to try something new. This willingness to align and realign with your present moment. There is no judgment of yourself. There's no frustration towards yourself. If you can't do the pose perfectly because there is no perfect yoga pose, it's okay. You're building body awareness you're building strength, you're building patience, right? With yourself to just show up and be in your own body as it is here and now. And then there's always the wonder like, was there anything else that I wanted to say?